What's up, everybody? We are back for another podcast. If you don't know, now you know. Now you're more in the know with yours truly, Josh Moore. What's up? What's happening? It's been a few weeks since I have posted a podcast. And man, oh man, am I excited for a few of the new podcasts that I'm going to have coming out. First and foremost, shout out to Matt Quigley at Trials and Tribulations Clothing. This sick new shamrock hat. No, I'm not Irish, but you can still kiss me. And I got this fluorescent fucking highlighter green tank top i wasn't a very big fan of these tank tops but now that i have been wearing it and i pressed this on there i think these are tight man these are super sick and ret- retro and in so as always head to fieldsupplements.com for all your supplement needs and check out trials and tribulation clothing on instagram go to trials and tribulations.com for all your clothing needs super sick hat and i'm gonna be showing off a few of the new hats and swag items that i have from them as well today i want to jump into a topic that i typically don't cover most of the time i'm into personal development i'm talking about life sex dating drugs sobriety relationships today i want to chat about some fight news and some things that i've been asked some questions that i've been asked about the ben Askren versus jake paul fight ben Askren versus Jake Paul, who would have known that this was a fight that was going to come to fruition? 2020 was a crazy year, and 2021 is even a more wild year when you think about Ben Askren, a professional and top 10 in the world in four different sports against self-proclaimed, I'm probably not even self-proclaimed, but YouTube star Jake Paul in a boxing match, an exhibition boxing match. Man, so what are my takes on this? What do I, who do I want to win? How am I going to break it down? First and foremost, obviously myself coming from a wrestling background, I'm going to be excited to go with Ben Askren. I have family, not family connections directly in my family, but I know Ben's family, his wife, Amy, who's, who's thick, according to Jake Paul. But I have connections with Amy and her family. And shout out to Amy's brother, Brad. It's his birthday today, so shout out to Brad. And so... I'm absolutely excited. I have been watching Ben wrestle for many years. I've watched him win an NCAA title. And I'm a huge wrestling fan, of course. And I've been around the wrestling spectrum for a really long time. And I've seen what Ben has done in a very unorthodox fashion. They call him Funky Ben for a reason. Because he just doesn't do things that are orthodox. He doesn't do things that are that are the traditional way of doing things. You know, if you were to show a kid technique on how not to do something, you'd probably show them a video of how Ben Askren does things in positions. Of course, he's done very well over his career as well as his coaching career um, and teaching kids the correct ways and techniques, but there are some things that Ben Askren can get away with. It's because it's just Ben Askren. It's funky Ben. So in everything that he does, he's unorthodox. So up to this point, we've only seen Jake Paul fight three non-fighters as as Ben would say and and he's got a, there's a lot of validity to that. So so Jake Paul up to this up to this point has only fought a few people who are maybe athletes and or work out. I mean obviously the uh the the basketball player that he just knocked out has never probably been in a fist fight in his life. So of course Jake Paul is going to look like this absolute superstar boxing phenomenon phenomenon on uh, and yeah, of course you look good. You look good against low-level competition, and of course Ben Askren doesn't have the best hands in the world. You know, obviously his whole game plan was to get a hold of you and strangle you and beat you down, wear you out, and tie you out the wrestler way. And his style wasn't flashy, but ultimately the one thing that we can say about Ben is, besides the Masvidal fight, Ben's got a fucking chin. Ben's got that that david statue head he just looks like a greek goddess right and and ben has got this fucking noggin on him that's able to take punishment we saw in the robbie lawler fight where robbie lawler was literally sending sledgehammers from the fucking wrath the 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 clouds of death and the and the the heavens of death down onto Ben Askren's fucking face across his face, and Ben still didn't go out. Obviously, the Masvidal fight was a little bit different, but I think anybody getting hit with that type of shot is gonna go to sleep, man. That's just a two high level athletes, and I think you run that fight back ten times, and it doesn't happen. That happens one out of every ten thousand times. I think Ben makes the adjustments. I don't know if Ben wins that fight, but I don't see that fight happening like that every single time. It's almost like the McGregor uh, fight against Jose Aldo in the thirteen seconds. Those are just those are just 
t times and flashes within fighting that if you're going to run that fight back 100 times, 1,000 times, 10,000 times, you're not going to see that same outcome. And I believe that that was the case with the outlying fight with Ben Askren and, and Jorge Masvidal. Now, as you look at the Jake Paul versus Ben Askren fight, as Ben says, if, if Jake Paul's an absolutely phenomenal boxer, guess what's going to happen? J Ben's probably going to lose the fight. But this is what I don't think has happened with Jake Paul. I don't think Jake Paul has been punched in the fucking mouth like Ben has. And, I, and this is my take on all of combat sports as well as wrestling, MMA, is, you know, when I was growing up and, you were, and you're a wrestler and you would see kids warming up, and you'd look and be like, man, dude, like, you'd see that one flashy kid who's just hitting everything super slick, you know, he's warm, warming up, he's just super smooth and cool and everything else, and then he takes fourth or fifth at the tournament, and the guy that won the tournament doesn't look smooth, doesn't look cool, his technique uh, is marginal, but the one thing that, that that guy has who probably won the tournament is toughness. Toughness, resilience, ability to fight and come back from adversity. And I, I, that's one thing that I don't feel that Jake Paul has done. Has had to come back from adversity. I don't think he's had to have a, he's ever really been in a fist fight, a fist to cuffs, where he's really had to show his willpower, come back from adversity. And you don't know what that feels like until you've been in the, in the deep end. And you don't know what it's like to drown in the deep end and to save yourself from drowning until you get there. Ben Askren absolutely has. One of the greatest MMA and combat sports athletes of all time. One of the most decorated college collegiate wrestling athletes and Olympian and Ben has been there Ben has been in the deep waters yes his style is unorthodox yes it doesn't look right yes it's a little bit funky and yes I wouldn't teach my kids how to wrestle and or fight like Ben but what I would teach my kids to be like Ben is his resilience his toughness and his tenacity and his relentless and relentlessness in the sport in the combat sports of wrestling boxing and MMA as well as life obviously this man has been punched he's been he's faced adversity he's come back from some of the most embarrassing moments of his life and he's still a great man a great father and a great mo role model for many people so for me my question is 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 can Jake Paul can he handle getting punched in the fucking mouth can he handle getting punched in the face? And can he come back from adversity? Sure, anybody looks good when they're, they're hitting the pads. Anybody looks good in sparring. But until you're in that cage, locked in there with another grown-ass man, and, you're, and he's trying to take your willpower away from you, and you're trying to do the same to him, and he puts you into a position where you're uncomfortable, you don't know how you respond in your uncomfortability until you're put into these uncomfortable situations. And I feel that's exactly what's going to happen in the Jake Paul versus Ben Askren fight. I think Ben Askren's going to come out, and it's going to be a slow start. I think, I think Jake might come out and tee off on Ben. He's going to get some good shots in. He's going to try to knock him out, knock him out cold. But what, what Jake doesn't understand is Ben is a high-level athlete, and Ben has been against Ben has been in high level competition for a very long time against some of the best in the world. This man has fought Robbie fucking Lawler, the brawler Lawler. This Robbie Lawler is a certified bona fide killer. Like that like I don't even I don't know many other men on this planet that are more scary than Robbie Lawler, especially in his prime. But even when he fought Ben Obviously, it was a very controversial ending with the bulldog choke, regardless of which way you look at it. But Robbie Lawler is a fucking killer. So I don't really believe that Ben Askren, by the, even the slightest, is scared or intimidated of, or nervous to fight Jake Paul. I believe that the only way that Ben loses is if Jake Paul actually is a great boxer. If Jake Paul's a good boxer, he keeps his distance, he doesn't get into a brawl, he doesn't try to make this a just ring him out grudge match where he try where you're going back and forth and really trying to test each other's grittiness and relentlessness. I think that if he makes this a boxing match, he beats Ben Askren. But if he makes this a fucking brawl, Ben Askren wins every time because I'm sorry, I don't want to be locked in regardless of of the dad bod Ben that that dad bod Ben has been rocking for fucking 15 years now and 20, 15 years in the, the highest levels of combat sports. I'm just not going to count him out. So, of course, I'm going to side with the MMA. I'm going to side with the wrestling community on this. And I'm going to side with Ben Askren because I believe, especially after watching now a few things, a few training footage of him. I don't think he's as bad as what we want to make him out to be. And I don't think that Jake Paul's as good as we want to make him out to be. And I could be completely wrong. I could look back on this podcast next week and say, holy fuck, Jake Paul's phenomenal. And, and if he is, he is. 
Plus, he's going against a MMA guy who was a predominant wrestler, a grappler, who didn't really focus on his hand speed. So his hand speed and, and his boxing. So for, for Jake Paul to think that he's some sort of boxer after this fight is a complete buffoon. It's an embarrassment to the YouTube community, embarrassment to the boxing community, and nobody really wins here except for Ben Askren because it just shows the type of character that Jake Paul really is. And Jake Paul, to me, after especially watching the press conference, is just somebody who's stuck in his ego of seeking attention. And I'm sure he loves it. He loves the attention, and that's what he's getting right here. He's getting the attention that he that he that he seeks, but I, I feel that he is going up against a man he, he wanted to, to get an easy fight with, and I just don't think that he's going to get it done against Ben Funky Askren, the Funkster Askren, because I just don't think he's got the heart, the will, and, and, the, and the relentlessness once he gets punched in the face. So that's my take on the, on the Ben Askren, Jake Paul fight. Tune in this weekend. I'll be watching for any more fight feedback. Please comment below which you would love to hear my takes on fighting and combat sports, wrestling, matchups, and I'll be certain to do a podcast on that. As always, be sure to comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and let everybody know that more in the know is the place to go. You guys have a beautiful day.